Hi. Um, I wanted to show you uh, why I did this second video on this. I'm going to just go in here and you should have this double piston set up. Just delete the lower one if you want to make a separate file, different file called alternate so you don't lose what you had. That's fine. Uh, and then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select this main null and zero this out by right clicking on these two arrows. And I want to show you um, what's going on if you haven't already noticed it. So if I just grab um, this null, or this uh, object here, it's the uh, connect rod big bottom. Uh, and that's just so we can see what's happening here. If I play this, uh, let's start over. Let's pull this out to, um, uh, let's pull it out to 100. That way you can really see what's going on. There's a little bit of delay uh, in here, and you'll see how that starts to move away from the axis point. Now, for an animation, you're never going to notice that unless you need to look up inside underneath this piston. And this setup is so much easier than my original setup, which did eliminate this, but uh, it's quite involved as far as uh, setting up the range mapper. But let's take a look at it. Um, so if you've made a duplicate or a copy of this file or saved some kind of incremental uh, copy, um, let's start in here. And so there's a few things we need to do. And one of them is, let's just go ahead and get rid of that tag altogether, the Espresso tag. And then come into your uh, constraint and deselect PSR because we're not going to use that this time. And then just clear this because we're not using that either. And so that should have popped back up and that's fine. And I do want to rename this. So we, we just want to call this uh, piston null so we're not confused. And I want to do a little bit of housekeeping here because we're going to go about this somewhat differently. So this whole connecting rod uh, and this part, this should all now, this is our, this is the uh, null that we uh, did the animation for the rotation. Okay. And so, and since we get, we're getting rid of that constraint, we're just going to take this whole rod assembly. Okay. And we're going to place it under there under the rotate null and so now we've got our rotation again okay and so uh, and I do want to take our piston null okay and we're going to place it above above the uh, rotate null all right so we should still be all good all right and then the last thing I want to do is take this rod point which is no longer connected to anything and we're going to make this our aim target Okay, and I want you to just place that um, under the gudgeon pin. If you remember, uh, our gudgeon pin is exactly centered, uh, not centered in the piston, but centered in Z and right on this pivot point. That's right where we want it. Just right click on these two little arrows here and that'll zero it out. Now that is exactly centered on our um, gudgeon pin. And that is going to be our new aim target. So roll the rotate open, go to your constraint tag, and just pull that aim target in there. And now we're back to where we were starting, except that nothing, the piston's not animated. Okay, so um, I know that we're going to work with these uh, uh, keyframes at 50 to set this up. So just put it at 50. Um, it's not real fast, but once this is set up, you can move this wherever you want. It will just make it a little easier. So just to give you an overview of what we're going to do, we're now going to drive uh, our piston head in position X by using our a rotation of a crankshaft. Okay. We know that this is a constant. This is turns 360 degrees 
every 50 frames okay so we know that's a constant so we're going to use that to drive our piston head okay so let's um i want to uh, turn off the actual mechanism or the actual piston head and i'm going to go up and select that piston null and um for some reason no it is okay it's lined up and we're just going to hold uh, we're just going to keep that selected and that's just so we can see this a little better and we actually could go in here and uh, turn this on and let's just make that green um, and that way when it's not selected we'll still be able to see it okay so now that we i'm going to put this down to 100 frames my overall uh, timeline so that i can easily see where i'm at here so at zero, um, actually, let's get in and select this, go into the coordinates tab, and let's just move this right in the center. Mm, pretty close. So once we get that centered, you want to freeze everything. Oh, the only thing is X, but let's just hit freeze all. Now we know we're starting at zero, at zero and the coordinates won't get so wonky once we start to do this. So we should uh, know that at zero, we are now centered at zero. And if we go up to 50, uh, we should once again be zeroed. Uh, it should be perfect in there, and that's what we want. So at 25 is also perfectly uh, perpendicular on aligned on X. So if we take our piston null, because don't forget, it's moving the aim target, so we're okay. We're going to move this up and align this. And all we're trying to do is get our range of how far this moves. And we know that at frame 25, our crankshaft has turned exactly 180 degrees. Our rod is laid out perpendicular on X perfectly. And it looks like we're probably, let's put in 200. And that looks pretty good. And it's a nice, nice even number. So what we want to do now is come up and let's add our uh, espresso tag. We can add it to the main null and put it in there. And so like I said, we're going to drive the piston movement in X by the rotation in the crankshaft. So let's come up here to the rotate because that's where our animation is. And we're going to bring that in and we're going to just come down to coordinates, rotation in B, which is what that is. And then we're going to need a range mapper. So right click, new node, espresso, calculate, range mapper. Go ahead and hook that up. And so the other thing we need is to drive this piston head. So we actually can use this piston null, okay, what we've been pulling this back and forth and what our measurement is on. And we're just going to drag that in, and we're going to grab coordinates, position, only X. And let's don't just, let's don't hook that up just yet. Let's do a little bit of housekeeping in here. So we know that we're driving uh, this by rotation, which is in degree. So let's grab degree, and we get an automatic 0 to 360, which is perfect. And we know that, oops, excuse me, we know that at 0, um, our x position is also 0. And at, our, at the highest point, at, 20, at frame 25, it should be 200. So let's put in 200, okay? So if we back this up, and we hook this up, okay, we immediately see that that jumps to where it should be, all right? I'm gonna open this up a little bit so we can see the full movement of this. And then, see what's happening? The reason is, is because actually at 360, this should be zero again, okay, the bottom, because that's where that's where it's positioned okay so if we put this at 50 you can see this should be back at at, at uh, zero the problem is if we put zero and zero that's never going to work it's not going to move 
So what do we do? Well, what we do is we use this spline function. So I'm going to open this. If you come down to the bottom, you see show in separate window. I'm going to pop that open and bring this up so we can see it larger. And so you don't see a spline in here, and there is one by default, and it's a linear spline. So let's pop that in there. So if you look across here, at this, it's 0 to 1. So at 1, this is representing our highest, or our upper output, our input upper and our output upper. So this says at 360 degrees, outputting 200. But if you remember, at 200, I mean at 360 degrees, we want to output 0. So if we pull this down, okay, now we have at 0, we have 0, and at 1, we have 0. And so with that spline like that, you're going to see that it's not going to move, which was the problem we knew if we just put in 0. But with the spline, we can change things up. So if we come in, we know that halfway through at frame 25 is our longest distance, which is 200. So we want to get that 200. We want to go halfway. This is a tw frame 25, essentially. That's why I put it to 50. So these are 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. You want to control click a point and what we want to do is drag that point all the way to the top and you can see that null moving and that's because now we're going to set this midway point at basically our highest our output upper okay it says our output upper and instead of the output upper coming at 360 degrees it's coming at 180 degrees and if it should be 0.5 and 1 and I'm going to lock both of those because I don't want those to move. And I'm going to do the same with this. Those are both at zero. I want to lock that. And this should be one and zero. And I'm going to lock that. So now we have close to the movement we want, but you're going to see something happening. And there's a, bou a bouncing, and that's this abrupt um, angles that we have. So let's start uh, setting up this spline. And this is where it gets a little tedious. So let's go into the timeline and pull these keyframes out to 100. Okay, so the last frame should be on 100. All right, go back to zero. And we're just going to set these up. Um, if you look at this, basically we have zero to one, and we're going to use that as zero to 100. So I'm going to go up and uh, start setting these up. First, do 10, and so that's going to be 1. We're going to put a key, a control click, a keyframe, and you just want to make sure that this top number is corresponds to this, so that we know that that's on 1. And then we're just going to, I'm going to hold the Option key and start pulling this down to, until that seat's right in the center. Uh, and I am going to click off of this so that we get oh and one other thing let's uh now let's just close this for a second go in here and grab your connecting rod small top and the basic tab turn on the color oops turn on on and we're going to make that kind of a reddish color so it shows up and uh and then i think we're going to just hide now we can leave the connecting bar so let's go back into our espresso <clears throat> get back to our spline and open that up okay so this bottom number is going to move this keyframe up and down on at the one position so we're just going to keep and now I'm holding the option key to get in increments of that number so that's close enough 10 gonna put a keyframe control click that on two. make sure it's only on two and again holding option to get smaller okay 30 <clears throat> make sure it's on the three all right now nope, we're gonna have to go up because this spline that we're creating is not just a consistent um, from start to finish 
I found it easier just to do this. They got me in the ballpark. And we leave it there and go to, and I'm going to go back 35. So that would be right in between. And you can, we could have done it um, just moving up. So I got 35 there. Come back down to 30, 25. Make sure this is just a 2, 5. Come down to 20 is good. 15, 1, 5. Oops. And you just want to get that pretty close into the center. And 5. And make sure it's just a 5. Or zero five actually on that one. And so now we got to go, oh, let's get this last one. That should be 45. <clears throat> that one, it's tedious for sure. And... Okay, so 50 is right, 55. Make sure it's 55. I'm still on the option. Okay. 60. Five. Make sure it's five and pull that down. Okay, so that's our rough spine, spline, and um, it's still not going to be perfect. It's still going to have movement, but we're a lot closer. Okay, so if we click in here, make sure these are all selected, and hit Command A to select all these points, and let's go here and put it to spline. Okay, now we have a soft interpolation between those. And if we take this back down to say 50 or even 40, um, I'm gonna click away. You can, let's go back to 50. You can see that that's really staying put, that's solid. A little extra work, but if you want that pretty perfect, um, that's a good way to do it. Okay, thanks for watching.